Hello, thank you for watching my short video, which is part of the 2012 series of videos that we have earmarked more or less dedicated to the Cosmic Christ to help you come back to your heart and embrace the I Am Presence already living within you. The theme for this short video as part of this series of videos that will lead us up to the 1st of January 2013 focuses on being vulnerable to God. As a lay monastic contemplative Franciscan monk, independent of the Catholic Church, yes I was a nursing monk within the Catholic Church, that was in my early days, but now I am a freelance independent who lives a simple life from my own home. But I'm also part of the Teo community of interspiritual Franciscans. It's my belief that in my vulnerability, I offer this with my availability to God so that the Supreme can use me in whatever way possible. As an enclosed monk, many people say, oh, but why lock yourself away? You could go back on the road and run retreats like you used to do around the world. And I'd say, yes, that would be very tempting and very nice financially. But I was guided to surrender and to embrace this life, which I love, and I wouldn't swap it for all the state-of-the-art houses in LA. Many people have the wrong idea about being enclosed. They think that you've locked yourself away because you're running away, you've had a bad relationship, you've been let down, you've been immature, maybe selfish. It's the contrary, in fact, because once I close the gate, I lock out the dramas of the world. I lock out the fear mindset that the media portrays to every child of God. Because today people thrive on crisis. And as a prayer partner for the whole of mankind, it is my gift to the cosmic Christ that I should dedicate my life for peace for unity. I may not see it in my lifetime, but my simple faith allows me to believe that whatever we offer, whatever we say or do, as a prayer, it never goes unanswered. So if you were to email me and share with me in confidence of your situation, I would hold that in my prayer before God, and I would then begin to thank God for answering that prayer. So what proof do I have? Well, the proof that I have is in the truth. And when Jesus was alive, he said, whatever you ask in my name, I will do for you. That's good enough for me. I don't need to rationalize it. I don't need to break it down. I've done that for too many years and ended up a miserable soul. Now I'm happy. I'm happy in my heart, I'm happy in my soul, I'm happy in my life, and I'm fulfilled at last in my inner sanctum, my monastery without walls. Now let me share with you the theme, Vulnerable to God. I'm going to read from my notes. More than anything else, the example of Jesus' life teaches us, in brackets, men, that all our activity needs to be rooted in contemplative communing with God. Initially, the Spirit leads Jesus into the desert to discern the meaning of the revelation of his identity given at his baptism. There Jesus opens himself to understand that revelation in all its implications he becomes vulnerable to God and to all the temptations we experience and even try to distort our sense of our true self. 
Yet out of that struggle emerges a man whose life flows directly from the appropriation of his identity in relation to God the Supreme. That sense of self and mission must be refined over and over in the rhythm of involvement with others and contemplatives, contemplative withdrawal, without the willingness to open ourselves to such moments of solitude. We men will never be able to sort through the images which clamour for our attention, promising true masculinity. Only by shifting our attention away from what others tell us we should be can we discern who we truly are? That is so true, isn't it? The revelation of our true identity comes when we are willing to risk openness to God's Spirit, speaking to our own. Are you willing to do that? Not many are, for it's a challenge. But the dividends are amazing. Well worth a try. It is a precarious enterprise, for like Abraham, we will be called to forsake the nest of patriarchy to embark on a strange new journey, like I've shared with you about my life, spending the last several years living the contemplative simple life, following in the footsteps of many great masters like Rumi, Osho, Mi, Baba, Francis, Sri Chimoy, Jesus, and the Lord Buddha. They all have had something to do with my spiritual journey and I've taken an eclectic stand and used the best from all to help me embrace the Franciscan Celtic spiritual life. We need community to cultivate new ways of being that we discover in prayer. In community we discover what it means to be open and vulnerable to God. Through the practice of being open and vulnerable to one another. And in community we receive support from one another, as I do from my brothers and sisters around the world, when we gather each day for prayer, for our Vigil for Peace dedicated to Gaia at eight o'clock, and again our midnight soiree for 30 minutes, live on live stream we have a short sharing from the heart and we conclude with a guided meditation allowing the cosmic Christ and Magdalena to come and touch us and help us embrace our true identity. Finally it is in community that we establish relationships of mutual mentorship with one another modelling for one another the courageous fidelity to the task of discovering our true selves in partnership with God. What a challenge. But you know, living the contemplative life has its drawbacks because if we're not balanced, grounded, safeguarded, protected, then our four walls can actually close in on us and it can overwhelm us and it can cause various illnesses such as mental health illnesses, depression. And though I battle with depression every day, it's through prayer and meditation that I'm guided to just hand everything over, to bless every issue, to bless how I'm feeling, to bless the problems, the dramas, the problems I have getting online so that nothing owns me. Many people I befriend today are driven by fear. They're afraid of themselves. They're afraid to look in the mirror and see what God sees. Oh no. They look and they think, oh, their hair is the wrong color, the wrong shape. The tutti that they're using doesn't blend with their skin or complexion. The shoulders are too big, so they need shoulder pads. They might need a tummy tuck or a bum tuck or a thigh tuck, whatever. There's so much vanity associated with looking at ourselves through our own eyes. 
our ego, our head center, we alienate us from our heart. So part of this being vulnerable to God is allowing ourselves to see what God sees and embrace it in love for there is no greater gift than to fall in love with the Supreme within oneself. Bless you.